Okay, today I'm gonna show you how to shade some folds and stuff. I just grabbed a rag and um, I'm just gonna use that as a reference, but the same thing goes for anything that has like a little divot in it or a bend in it or anything along those lines. So what we really wanna look at is how the light hits it. So how it goes dark, it gets light, and then we've got the color and then it goes dark again. Um, sometimes it's a little bit harsher where it gets light and it's like a bright white on top and then it gets dark, it just really depends. So. I'm going to um, use yellow. It's not gonna be exact because I'm not gonna really work on getting that light yellow um, just because of time here. So I drew some areas here where my, so this line right here would be the inside line. This line here is the inside of here. And then we've got this fold and out to the side, okay? So because it's yellow, I think I'm gonna have to go back in and erase these a little bit or at least get them a little bit lighter um, because we're working with yellow. Like I'm just sort of lightening it up. Sometimes um, if you have a different color, like a darker color, then you don't necessarily need to do that. But I don't want these harsh lines to create my wrinkles. I want my lights and my darks to create them. I hope that makes sense. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna sort of come in here and start layering. So I'm gonna start putting my yellow. That's where this crease is, remember? So it's gonna get darker there and it gets a little bit lighter on top, but I'm just sort of putting this yellow down in a, an even light. It's not very dark, but an even light sort of um, layer here. All right, and then I'm gonna come around in here. So it does look a little gray. I'm gonna take a little bit of a brown because I didn't grab, I didn't grab a black, but we'll use brown for like this dark area. So it does sort of come up here and fade. So it comes up and it gets a little bit darker. And we wanna make sure we've got the shape of it, right? So the brown does sort of fade down. And you can see I'm holding the pencil pretty far back. I'm using the, the side of it. This gives me a little bit more surface area and helps me to shade really lightly. Okay, so I am gonna come back in and add a little bit of yellow on top. And then I'm actually gonna come in and add some white on the top top here. And it's gonna be hard to see with the yellow, which may mean that I need to darken my yellow up a little bit in some areas. But starting off lightly first always is helpful because um, you can always go dark, right? You can always go a little bit darker. So I'm just gonna add some white around this whole thing, make it a little bit creamier. I'm trying to get this bright white that's in here. I'm pressing pretty hard even though I'm holding back on the pencil. So I'm gonna come in here again, make it a little bit darker here. It does blend out just a tad, but not much up here. Adding it a little bit darker here and blending it out. And then coming in with this, oops, yellow, um, not yellow, white again just to help cream that, especially since this is such a lighter air, a lighter spot. Now, if you don't have such a light um, area, this you may not wanna add as much white as I am, and maybe a little bit to make it creamier, but not as much. Okay, so we've got that, and I'm just gonna leave that for now because we can always come back and change it. Now, if we look here, it does get, and I don't know if you guys can see it, but it's darker here, and then it gets lighter as it goes up. So where this area is going, I'm gonna make it really dark here. And then it does get a little bit lighter on this curve and a little bit lighter out. Oh, I forgot to add the yellow on here first. It's okay. And then it fades out. So it's darker here in the middle and then it fades out a little bit and comes to like a point because then this curve comes in there. So it comes to a darker point here. Um, I am gonna blend some of this brown up onto the yellow just a little bit here. So realistically all, I'm gonna add some yellow back on here. 
all of our um, bends and folds and all that kind of stuff is really just lights and darks being next to each other. Sort of adding the yellow on top. I'm going to come in with that white again to sort of cream it up, make it a little bit lighter. So I made it pretty dark on this side, so I'm actually going to come back in and darken this up a little bit. And it's probably a little bit darker over there because I forgot to add the yellow on first. I can't believe I did that, but I guess it happened, right? I can add a little bit more yellow. I think that side's a little bit darker too. A little bit more yellow on. So I am gonna add a little bit here. Right next to this bright white, I gotta make that bright white with a little bit of yellow. So I'm gonna come back in and really press with my white here. And then on the other side, it gets white. So if we look here, it gets dark and there's like a white and then yellow in the white. So I'm gonna come in. And again, this is a lot of layering, a lot of going back and forth, a lot of really paying attention to where those areas are. I will say I do a little bit harsher shadows. I don't know, it's just how I was taught. Like I do like that harshness. So coming in here, shading with the shape of my little fold here. And I'm putting yellow down first, like I should have on the other one. Um, and then we'll come in. And uh, actually, yellow under here too. Meeting up with all this stuff here. And I do think sometimes when you do folds and these kinds of things, it does help to sort of take a step back and um, really look at it from a different angle and different point of view because sometimes when you're just doing it you're like it doesn't really look like anything but it really does it it blends itself out and it and it works out but sometimes we need to take a step back and do it that way so there's this really dark area under here that i'm going to sort of blend out gets a little bit lighter on the edges and then it does blend up a little bit. So a lot of our harsh edges are going to have a little bit of blending opposite-wise. And then I'm going to blend it out a little bit. So I'm going to come in here, add a little bit of the white on like we've done with everything else, just to lighten it and creamy it because that yellow is pretty light here. And then I am going to add some, try to get some brighter white in here on this edge here, because it does get pretty white right here. I will tell you, if you're doing a different color, not yellow, it will show up, your bright whites will show up a whole lot easier. And adding some contrasting yellow or darker area around the bright whites helps to really exemplify them or make them stand out a little bit more. You know, it sort of just looks like a bunch of lines, I feel like right now, hopefully. See, like, hopefully from your perspective, it looks a little different. Um, we're gonna do one more. I'm gonna do this area here. It sort of comes from here. Do a really light yellow. 
around here. So even though I'm doing it quickly, I'm still using little tiny circles like what we talked about. I'm still blending them nicely, doing it really lightly and going from there. So next to this little area here, I don't know why I grabbed my orange. I just brought orange over just in case. Next to this area here, it is really white and light. So we really have to make sure we keep that really white and light. And then it does get dark here where this is meeting. And then it gets dark in here. and then comes up a little bit. This whole edge is a little bit dark, so I'm just bringing some brown, blending it up, keeping this area there a little bit lighter. This is, this shading here is all blending together a bit. And I know like right now, I'm hoping, I'm hoping it looks different for you guys than it is for me. Cause right now I'm sort of satisfied with it, but not really. And I think part of it is because it's only a piece of what I'm doing and it's not the whole thing, right? Um, I'm hoping it's starting to look like it's sort of turning in on itself here. And you could go back and like I said, I sort of exaggerate a little bit more so my darks, I really like really dark. Um, I'm trying to do it not as much here. I really like that look where it's, um, this actually needs to come in a little bit more. I like that look where it's really, has that nice dark shadows with it, but sometimes it makes it look a little bit more abstract, I would say. <gasps> So just coming in here and fixing some of these, making sure that white's there, coming in with the yellow. Um, I will say sometimes it's a little bit easier with a different color because you can clearly see where the lights and the darks are much easier um, than what you're able to see with me right now because of that yellow. Probably should have picked a different color, just use this as a, a reference and then I'm using a ton of white and it's hard to see and I'm like pressing really really hard sometimes with color pencils too when you're doing this letting it sort of sit and then coming back like I don't know 10 minutes later will help the layering process and I don't know I if it like helps with it just resting a little bit see like that white already I, I let it rest and now I can put it on and now you can see it a whole lot better so that might, that's something to consider and to remember too, that sometimes it just needs a little bit of a rest um, and then come back again. But that's how you would do any kind of folds or bends or curves. Remember, it's always dark to light and then back down to dark again. Um, and that's really what you want and keeping those bright whites like in between in those areas where we need to make sure that it really looks like that.